shaping up in the way the previous matchups have been going, this is probably one of the matches that's going to have a huge impact on who gets top four. Uh, maybe even top two. DK were looking good to uh, to making it there after 4-0 yesterday, but remaining. they just got stomped, let's be honest, by Vici Gaming. They The first blood in that game was at 14 minutes, and it turned into barracks instantly. So it was a very special game. Vici Gaming won with a level 5 Shadow Demon. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Um, but yeah, that's one for the books. If you guys didn't see the previous game, I would recommend you seeing it just for... You know, it's not one of the most action-packed or flashy games, but just for from a strategic point of view, it's really interesting to watch. But yeah, like you say, next game is up for DK. They hopefully shook off the previous game and and get ready to, to face up against Titan. And so There's some interesting storylines coming into this match as well, because you look at Titan, they finished top three last year, and many would argue that they should have been in the grand finals. They barely ended up losing to Navi, and in, in small part at least, uh, probably in large part, on the back of not only the KYX, KYXY Aegis deny, because I still think they could have won that game after that happened, but the way it messed up their team's mentality the rest of the game. They made a lot of mistakes they hadn't been making after that, and well, Mushi left the team after Tia. Yamate, a player who he's had fairly public falling outs with in the past, and um, I think there's a, a quote out there by Yamate Five that Mushi is too bleeping good, a little bit sarcastically said in an interview yeah. from about a year back. But well, we'll see it, who gets the better of the other here. That's to me is going to be one of the fun aspects of casting in this game. Is at least for Yamate and Mushi, I think there's something extra in the in yeah. the game. You already have enough stakes. That's Ti, but uh, this is also about pride. So with that being said, draft well underway for DK. It's almost always a void or a tide for Ice Ice Ice. If you look at their all their games yesterday, he played one of those every single game and well the void gets banned but the tide led through and they will start it off with the first pick Ten seconds and remaining. interesting to notice the wraith king bands that are coming in against titan pretty pretty Five frequently i guess almost all of their games actually at least the ones we've seen they're, they're banning wraith king early on because yamate apparently plays an absolute beast wraith king that people don't want to deal with so interesting to see that that's a first ban against this team and yeah like you said this is probably the game that titan wants to win the most it's it's the Mushi factor, it's the fact that this is going to bring them into second place if they win. Uh, they will be they will be six and four and DK will be six and five. So very important matchup. The, t the Razor will be the first pick, and we, we've seen this in many games so far in this tournament, where you just safe lane the Razor against Tide, and he just wins the lane. So Tide is usually a hero that's hard to deal with in the Radiant off lane, but if you can have one hero just beat him flat out in the lane, that's perfect. It opens up the rest of the map. Yeah, either your supports can just get their levels in the jungle, or they can go for a lot of early pressure. And with this Ancient Apparition pick, it still remains open how they want to approach it. Titan could even look towards an aggressive tri lane. That's something mouse sports love to do, is get like a Marana to follow up the Ancient Apparition and if you get two, three range tiers, you can go for early kills. So they'll leave their cards, uh, they'll leave everything flexible. The other thing Titan have pulled out, which we may Five see again, is the me. Naga Siren. To me, that's a hero that I'm surprised neither team's going for, but it may just be something they reserve for later on in the draft. DK won some of their more difficult matches yesterday with the Naga, and so too uh, did Titan. So with that being said, uh, DK, looking at their second pick here, they'd love to run a few supports for Lanham and MMY. The Marana Shadow Demon is very popular for this team. Uh, we've seen a lot of Lion as well. For MMY in the past, and Lanham's also been the one playing a bit more recently. And, well, what a call. Wow. The Naga. Wow. Wow. Amazing call. That hero was banned in the last game by... Was it? Yeah, it was first phase banned by Vici. Against DK, so I think you want to ban it against this team, honestly. I think you want to ban it in general. I was expecting this going into the tournament that Naga would just have a resurgence, start being one of the early phase picks. It's a really great hero for long games. It's a safe pick if you get some decent farm, and it's like a lot of these land games that are really important. It's about getting into the the mind of the opponent. Yeah. If they feel after 10 minutes like we have to do something, we have to do something, we have to do something, Naga's farming. Oh 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 oh. Then you're forcing fights that you don't want to take. You might lose them because Five they weren't good, or you might be too affected to actually play it properly. And the moment you lose the mind game, you lose the real game. So I think Naga, for the main event for me, is perhaps top pick, top ban, actually. Uh, but it's starting to rise in the group stage so far, and not surprised to see DK picking it at all. Also great synergy with Tide, by the way. Song of the Siren into Ravage. Classic old combo. Yeah. If you haven't seen the play from TI2, which is not doable any longer in the exact same way because of how Vacuum works with Naga Sleep, but... The, the Ravage still works the same way. Yeah, and I mean, hey, maybe this is where we see Titan go for something like a Rubik support. It's definitely a, a signature hero for Extinct and, and to a lesser extent, I think, for Net. But uh, I'm looking at this Lion Ban, and I, I gotta say, Sin, I love this Ban. Against Naga, 
you really, it's Ten really difficult to yank me. her because as soon as she sees you going on her, she songs. She almost always has it up as Five the game goes later. Remain. The other thing the lion does really well against Naga is kill off illusions. You can hex one, you can monitor in the other, or Reserve if time. there's no time pressure, you can just keep on monitoring every few seconds. So I think lion's one of the best supports to deal with the Naga Siren time as far as that goes, time. but. Well, we're not going to see it this game. It gets banned, and then, just to rub it in, they're also going to ban out a Tinker. Something I don't, I haven't seen too much from out of Titan. I believe they've run it with KYXY handling it on occasion, but I wouldn't really call it like a go-to Titan hero. Ten it's more just a trending hero at the event. I seem to recall about a year ago, Ohio played one of the, the best Titan, uh, <laughs> yeah, the best Tinkers in Southeast Asia, maybe even in the world. Yeah. I saw one or two performances where I was like blown away by how good it was. But um, the way they play, the way the hero distribution is now, I don't think they would consider putting him on a Tinker. Uh, he will generally be playing that offlane off role, of course. And what I'm looking for for Titan here is, I think, okay, you're playing into Naga Tide, you don't want to go late game, that's pretty obvious. And if you do, you want a really clear-cut plan of how to beat Naga, they don't have a solution yet. So, maybe you look to take control early on. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Ohio uh, Nature's Prophet here. Global pressure together with Ancient Apparition, pushing towers with the Treants. They're also dire. He's a good Roshan hero. Uh, probably going to be a really a really great multi-purpose hero, as well as just being able to, you know, teleport in and get an Orchid, you can gank Naga Siren. You get a Hex, you can gank Naga Siren. There's, there's a lot of functionality from the Prophet here, so I think that's definitely in the, in the cards for Titan. Alternatively, Clockwork. Naga yeah. cannot sing when she's caught in cogs and battery assault. It's a too long cast animation, so you can actually lock her down. Yeah, unless she's already got her illusions there or has. Yeah, like that, a in that style, case, but at that point, yeah, you're, you you want to shut the Naga down early anyway before she's picking Five up a Manta. So, well, uh, I guess the other thing worth mentioning is, well, just to echo what you said, Ohio was playing Tinker, but that was when he played the solo mid role for the team. It was um, a really long time. Actually, I think it was even before he joined uh, RNG Sports. Yeah. When he was still on MUFC, right. he was their standout solo mid, and, and then he got poached by Mushi, and RNG used his talents to do really well at TI3. So, yeah, he had some sensational Tinker games, and that was when he really rose to prominence as one of the flashiest up-and-coming players in Southeast Asia. But... Titan go for Shadow Shaman, so maybe maybe kind of a, even a better option than the Lion in some ways. You get more push, and you still get that instant disable once you have a Blink Dagger. Five Perhaps Titan actually look to pull a Avicii. They could go for a, a Veno now, and look Reserve to push the towers really early on, and put a great amount of pressure. A carry, a melee carry like Naga Siren has a really hard time fighting into Razor and Veno, so... If Titan want to try to take that approach, they could try to get some really early towers. I think the Bad Rider, however, could put a stop to that. It's a great hero against push. Not because of Firefly as such, but more just the ability to catch out a hero, pull it in, and put the enemy team at a disadvantage so they have to fight under the tower instead of in front of it. So, DK's late game is just filthy right now. Titan, Titan can't want... go late game. It, pretty they... much, at this point, to me, no matter what yeah. last two heroes they pick, they will lose late game Ten if DK pick the correct stuff. So. Even even if they have the de equal damage output, you're up against Five that Naga. Like, you're just not going they, they, Their crowd control just outmatches yours, and if it comes to a base raise, they can take buildings and you can't even defend with the song. A really good Naga player will song three or four players and move her body around such that illusions are hitting the barracks and you can't even respond. And uh, the move mention her of the body around so that she's hitting the racks. And, and Cinderin had a little childish grin on his face as <laughs> move her body around was uttered. I, I actually see a lot of similarity between Naga Siren and Shakira now that you say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. If oh, only we had a producer who could just oh, queue up a, a five second clip right now. Uh, queue up an instant rim shot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there is the profit coming in from uh, from Titan for Ohio, so as expected, a lot of early pressure from them. I think it's the best pick they could have got here. Um, good call, by the way. And uh, yeah, well, you called the siren, so we went for one. One for one. So, uh, it's tied. So do you, want, do you want a chance at, at getting the lead here? What's DK going to pick now? Mm. Reserve time. Ru Let's see, what have they been running? They've been running Rubik occasionally as well. Um, I don't know if we'll see that this game. Oh, this is a tough one. Land on Junglers are also an option if we if they want to go for an Enchantress and get some... I feel like that's the one thing they're a bit lacking in, is just pressure in the laning stage, and they're going to be up against Aggressive Charlie. Man, you're putting me on the spot here, Sin. What are you thinking? How about Disruptor? Skyrath? Skyrath? They have been running a lot of Skyrath, actually. Skyrath is definitely a possibility. It's got great synergy. Okay. 
All right. Well, I wouldn't have guessed that. That was my Titan pick. Okay. That could have been good, but I love this choice from DK for the reason that they realize what Titan want to do, and they need a defensive support that can hold the towers. So a lot of Venom wards, the Plague wards here can do a great amount of work in that regard. Uh, good synergy with Naga. You've got Poison Nova after the Song of the Siren can be great remaining. for positional purposes. The reason I was considering Skywrath is, first of all, Five having the instant silence remaining. against these Titan heroes is really useful, and you've got two good setups for Mystic Flare and Snare. You've got Bat Rider Lasso. You could even Ravage isn't terrible. And even Ravage, yeah. yeah. Uh, so they, they definitely had some options to play around with the Skyrath, but thinking twice, I think Veno was a better choice. They need the defensive support that can hold towers. Early aggression is not the goal for DK with this draft anyway. So Well, Titan now. The Razor Prophet picked up, looking at a third core, and what kind of a core will it be? There's heroes like Dragonite who are just kind of solid frontline tankers, but doesn't offer you the best lane presence, which means maybe DK can even throw the Naga mid at that point and, and run a more elusive and... Uh, stronger Five laning hero remaining. in the safe lane, but Naga versus Razor mid is really hard lane though. We that's saw it true. yesterday. Navi we played it against top. Cloud9 and that's... Envy was struggling. Or no, never mind. That I was Tinker like against Honestly, Naga. all these heroes struggle against uh, Razor. Even Batrider does not do that well against Razor. No, that's true. So I Razor feel like kind no of lane against most heroes. Yes. Uh, I guess the thing is, Bat doesn't need to win his lane yeah. that badly. He can always catch up in the jungle. But the, I think the two best lane counters in this tournament I've seen to Naga so far in mid were a Tinker played by Dendi against Cloud9 against Eternal Envy, and I've seen. Someone played Razor against Snake King's Naga. That was in the long game yesterday against IG, I guess. It was Ferrari playing Razor against, uh, against Snake King on the Naga. Snake King actually fell behind pretty hard, but they still managed to make a comeback and win that game at the end, so. But I could imagine Titan going for that. I still think, you know, they've kind of put all their eggs into one basket, and I think they need to continue with that with the fifth pick. They, they have laid out a strategy, follow it through, and then it's either, you know, you perform early on or you just lose. That's kind of the way this game is going to go down, so Titan have to have to perform early. The good thing for them is, I think Ohio is one of the best early game Profits, and this pick is really good when you want to pressure early on. I was thinking towards a Death Prophet, but the Pugna offers you even a bit more, and also just more consistency as well. Death Prophet, when her ult's down, she can't push, but Pugna, you blast, you back off, four seconds later, you're blasting again, so. Titan played very well with this yesterday against Navi as well. Their Pugna was very good in that game. I think I it's one of the heroes we're gonna see more of in the tournament as well, to me. Matches up well against Skyrath Mage for the teams that choose to pick it, especially after the lightning stage, and it, it punishes remaining. greed. And I've noticed that a lot of the teams have been playing a bit greedier. We've seen a lot more Naga Siren picks, a lot more Tinker remaining. picks, and you know we've actually seen a, a, a sore lack of Shadow Fade. I think we'll be seeing a bit more of him later on. And well, if you want to run top. heroes like that, Pugna is here to punish you. And the interesting thing for me about this is that DK last banned the Morphling, Ten which looks like they're remaining. analyzing the situation completely different than you and I were. Because for that purpose, I think Five Morphling would have been a really remaining. bad pick. Yeah. And maybe kind of stuck in a mentality where they are focusing so much on mid and late game that they forget that games can actually end early. Which they really shouldn't forget, because they just got stomped in 15 minutes, right? Uh, and Pugna is one of the heroes that can really do it. It was a great pick for Titan yesterday. I think in this game, Pugna isn't the best. Just The Nether Ward is not that good this game in comparison to no. other games, but it's more about just putting the early pressure. And I like to say that Pugna sets a battlefield, right? Yeah. You go somewhere, you force the fight, and the enemy team is at an innate disadvantage. Their mana is being drained, they're taking damage from casting spells themselves. And, and it's there's not a clock, like, because your tower is taking yes. consistent shit damage. It's, let's see, the tier 2 towers have 1600 health, right? Yeah. And tier 1s have 1300. So tier 2s need 10 blasts, and tier 1s need 8 to fall to... If Nether Blast is the only damage source, yeah. they deal 162.5 on level 4 to building. Five seconds and I remaining. I how that actually works, if it just deals 163 or 162. But it doesn't really matter. It's a minor it's, difference. But it's very quick, and I, that's what you want, really. If you're if you're DK, you don't want to be under a clock like that. You'd love for this game to just be slow and steady and tighten. I think it's a great lineup on multiple fronts as well. If you're going to give away the Naga, you want to be able to take Roshan early, and you can do that as well with the Shadow Shaman and Nature's Prophet. If they get a slight lead, they can go into the pit. DK are a really good lineup at contesting Rush, but if Titan have the gold advantage, if they're sitting on a mech and a couple extra levels, some early kills, then I don't think DK will fight them. So with that being said, guys, well, can Titan get the revenge on Mushi, their former leader who's abandoned them? Will they strike back, or will Mushi prevail? We'll find out. It's DK versus Titan, a crucial match for both teams. Net will be playing your Shadow Shaman. We have Yamate, the Pugna. Uh, meanwhile, Ohio playing the Prophet. Already TP'd into the jungle off the bat, or I guess ran down here. Has not skill teleported. And 
Um, well, drops a sentry ward now. Now drops an observer ward up on the cliff too, and we've got KYXY handling the razor going mid. Extinct, your ancient apparition. On the radiant side, Ice Ice Ice, the Venomancer. This puts Mushi onto the Batrider. Lanham will be handling the Tidehunter, burning on a hero that he has been dominant with so far this event, the Naga Siren. And MMY Momoya will be playing the Rubik. It's really interesting to see a support Tide. I think it's the first time we've seen it so far in this tournament. Pretty much every team offlanes it since the buff to Anchor Smash and to Kraken Shell. I think first but was the Razor. This might be a... You, maybe they're just... You know what? We just don't want to lane the hero because he's just going to get destroyed. Begins. The thing is, Titan is one step ahead in that regard because they're putting Razor mid. So Tide would have actually had a lane against AA, Pugna, Shadow Shaman. Well, you kind of don't want to do that anyway. But I think Venom is actually even worse for this lane, so... I guess the priority for DK here is that they want Venno to get levels. It's really important that they get Plague Wards up to level 4 here, so I guess they're willing to sacrifice Ravage to get Plague Wards, and I, I agree with that choice. This is going to be a game where DK, like you said, the best way of looking at it is like a ticking clock. The longer time goes without them losing towers, the better. They don't need big ultimates, they just need to hold. If Naga is farming, everything is fine. It doesn't matter if two or three heroes on Titan get good farm as long as Naga gets free farm. So oh, we'll see Ice 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 actually already being in trouble. Uh, Ned will reach the shackle. There's going to be so much damage coming out. Oh, this, this is, is has first to be blood. first blood. He gets driven into the trees and instantly picked off. Beautiful lane ward to set it up, Sin. Wow, did that just say burning is averaging a GPM of 758 on Naga in 6.81? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's pretty high. He that's the average. He <laughs> oh only started God. playing the. He, oh yeah, because there's been games where it's probably close to a thousand. The funny part is he wasn't even playing the hero when it was really popular. When we saw Arteezy playing a lot of Naga Siren, I think Sing Sing and Eternal Envy. Well, actually, it was Eternal Envy who was playing yeah. quite a bit, but it, he was not playing it back then. I saw him practicing at Star Ladder Season 9 before one of the matches. He was practicing the 8 slot at Naga, you know, where you have the Necro Book, the Refresher Orb for the double song. So if it comes down to an ultra late game scenario, but he never used it in the tournament. I was like, ah, oh, maybe you know, maybe it's just messing around. And then, then they started burning it out, and it may be become one of the go-to heroes if he does well here. But yeah, first blood to Titan. We're talking a lot about burning Snog and Titan are the first. That was a board. pretty impressive stat, though. I feel like that de that deserved a bit of attention. That's one of the sickest stats I've seen so far in this tournament. A an average GPM of 758 on a hero is pretty ridiculous. It might be one of the highest in the game for any player on any hero, actually. It's not a it's not a one-game record, but it's more, if that's the yeah, average. Consistency yeah, consistency over nine games, that's very impressive. So, anyway, mid lane, we've got Razor facing off against the Batrider. Like you said, probably Razor having a bit of an advantage here, but Mushi's holding his own. It's 7-1 to one against 5-4, for four, so pretty even at this point. KYXY, of course, starting with that magic stick, so every time the Napalm is used, he gets a little bit of an advantage in the lane from that. But for me, the bigger lane to look at is still top. Can Ice 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 actually get these levels? He's in the Radiant off lane, and he's being contained pretty well here by the Titan supports, whereas in the bottom lane, Prophet always has... he always has different op options. If he doesn't feel like he can lane, he can go to the jungle. At the moment, he's putting a lot of emphasis on just blocking the jungle, so there's no pulls happening from DK. I'm not sure why he's using the Treants for this, because his wards were actually still there. Or at least one of them, but that might have just expired. Or No, never mind, that was a previous train actually. He wants to block this camp constantly, and... DK are just not finding anything. They can't find a sentry ward either. They finally drop a sentry, but poor Lanham, well, it's gonna be it's gonna disappear on its own, right, before he even gets to it. And meanwhile, this this observer ward, still not yet to be spotted. That is a pretty pretty damn good location, I gotta say. Not somewhere you would normally look to D ward. Especially and not as a melee hero, that's kind of He placed I, it, maybe he placed it can. from the river. And up onto the cliff, so I think that really caught them off guard. Yeah, it's it's a it's an interesting rune because it pretty much only sees the rune uh, or an interesting ward. Sorry, oh, top lane. The they yeah. started with the hex. They found Ice 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 I've again, and they before. get off the blast. Ice Ice Ice, no! One more right click. Daddy goes again, and Titan are just punishing this off lane Venno. Now, Sin, I guess the question is, would this be happening to a Tide Hunter, or would he be too tanky for them to bring down like this? I actually still think he. You know, that second kill, I think he might have... No, he would have survived the first one. If he had a point in Kraken Shell, because he would take... How much is it? 10 damage per level, right? Yeah, yeah. 10 damage less. He would have had a stout shield, which Venno also doesn't have. And he'd have better base HP as yeah, well. Yeah, they have the same armor, so... I mean, I, I think the Tide wouldn't have died. 
Yeah, I agree. I don't think he would have died yet. So from that point of view, the, the strategy for DK definitely not working out just yet. And with Ice 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 only being level 2, this could turn out to be just a, a laning mistake so far. Looks oh. like Lanham will rotate top at this point. I don't think he can help him, to be honest. You know what? I want to go back to something you mentioned, which is the support so far for DK. And this is classic Ohio offlane nature's profit. Not only did he drop the two wards to block two camps, but he also was using the trance manually to harass the heroes in lane to disrupt any any pull attempts or rotations and to block the third camp. So you look at the levels right now, it's a level one Tidehunter and a level two Rubik, no boots on either. Meanwhile on the side of Titan, Nets Radiant's level three and the HF Apparition is level three as well, almost has his boots too. Titan, their supports are way ahead and these are supports that need their levels. Oh, Ice 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 might get caught again here. The ward's been dropped, oh, really this is nice a long dive and there is help inbound, but it's a level <laughs> one and level two support helping. Will it be enough is the question. They lift up that. Maybe the creeps can be the third hero here. The extra source of damage. Oh, this bad rider could cause a lot of issues here, but he's gonna get shackled, actually taking a lot of damage. Mushi might just flat out die here. He gets brought down. The Shadow Shop, it's the trade in Titan. A one for one exchange, a core for a support and a tower down. And meanwhile, mid lane. Well, KYXY says, great, my lane's empty. Let me work on the tier one mid. And speaking of KYXY, he is. Actually, only, he's only breaking even with the bat here, really. 21 and 2 to 18 and 13. He's getting denied like crazy, but eh, end of the day, still got to call that a win for Titan. I'm starting to think ahead in this tournament because if, if DK are like on and off, so one day is good, one day is bad, one day is good, one day is bad. I'm, I'm trying to think of where, they, where they'll end up. The first day for them was really disappointing. They went two and three. Then the next day they got four wins straight. Yesterday they were really on fire. And today they got crushed by Vici and they're off to a hard start against Titan. Now by no means are they behind so much that they can't come back here. It's definitely easily manageable. Burning's getting great farm. So that part of their strategy is working out. But I have to admit, I'm kind of worried for them in, in the sense that this offlane has gone to absolute hell, and their supports are not finding much. MMY is level 3 at 6 minutes, and Lanham is level 2. Looking over at Titan, we've got a level 3, almost level 4 Shadow Shaman, a level 4 AA. The Prophet, who was offlane in comparison to the Venom, just got the tower last hit. He's got an assist as well. And now he might even find a gank on MMY. Ned is there as well with the Shackle. They've also got the other shock to follow up with, and even the Plasma Fuel. They don't even need the other shock. Easy kill. And now they found burning stacks as well. The Naga Illusions will come into trouble and protect him, but if they can steal this big camp, that's just more economic damage to a very fast Naga start for Burning. He does not go for the straight Relic. I've seen him go some his Boots Radiance, and if he's feeling like he can get away with it, but I think Burning realizes he'll have to participate a little bit in fights with the poor start his team's had. This could be one of the games where you need to get the drum as Naga. Uh, because uh, the Akila kind rushes... of serves that role. I, I feel he may just sit on the Akila, but... It's possible. But the thing is, if he rushes the Radiance, if that comes at the cost of losing like three or four towers where he could have maybe had an impact if he were able to fight, then I'm not sure it's worth it. Like, I, I would agree with getting a Radiance early on if his team is managing well to defend the towers, but as it looks right now, we're seven minutes in and Titan are actually really at a 3,000 gold lead with a free farming Naga on the enemy team. That's a significantly... Oh, I, I, a I, really I, good there start. could be a profit coming in soon. And he actually has the teleport. Surprised they didn't make a go. He has no tier one. But they're gonna let him sit here. Next time that he is spotted out though, they'll probably jump him. Nice. And now the rat brown comes bottom. Net and extinct smoked up and, and they're ready to pounce. Oh, this is a big kill if they can get it. Will Burning be passing up on the song? No, he won't. He's gonna get hexed. He has his ultimate available, but he can't get it off. Titan strike again. And Burning, not even rushing the radiance, still goes down. Even after picking up the rain of a kill, he's just not tanking up. The Venomancer will try to apply some pressure to the top lane, but realistically sins. I think they're losing this tower bot. They don't have the wards yet, but they have a Pugna, and that's really all you need and to start level these seven towers. as well. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. A fourth highest tower damage among all heroes and Pugna. It's, uh, I guess that's not that surprising, but he's still competing against heroes like Lycan, Tiny. Uh, who else does a lot of tower damage? Lone like, Druid. Uh, it, it might actually be the three heroes he's after, I guess. Fallen. Lycan, Tiny, and Lone Druid probably have the top three. And now a wraparound top from KYXY. He's picked up a haster and he goes on the ice ice ice. The plasma field won't connect. There is no TP mana, and Ice Ice Ice, well, he's given them another kill. He's off to a terrible start here, Sin. One and three, and they're finding kills on him while pressuring the other side of the map. He's up to level five, so closing in on that level seven, he'll need to defend the towers. The problem is, the towers might be gone by then. I think Titan are in a position right now where they could actually just go and kill Roche. They have Treants. They have uh, Mass Serpent Wards now available. Probably we might see a Medallion getting picked up by one of the supports. AA could do it in 100 gold if he wants, so could Shadow Shaman. 
Uh, and then afterwards, maybe just go and siege a tower. The only way DK can possibly fight that is either by sniping it with Song of the Siren and stealing the Aegis, or if Mushi can blink and then snatch it. They There's still don't have Ravage. We, no. we keep our, we look at the lineup, it's like, oh, they have a Tide Naga, very strong combo, but a lot of that's predicated on having Ravage. Radiant's We're nine minutes in, Lan, I'm still level five. Attack. I think it might be this first support Tide of the tournament, to be honest. And one of the reasons we saw him fall out of popularity as a support is he doesn't do that much until he gets his level six. And it's, it's kind of been the story for some of the DK games, I think. They're trying these alternative supports. They had some decent success yesterday with the support Juggernaut. But some of the games that we're seeing, they're just getting punished for it. They have heroes that aren't effective enough early on. And that means they're heavily on the back foot already. That we'll see if they can manage to make a comeback here. I think the big player for them has to be the Batrider from Mushi right now, who needs to make some big plays. Well, meanwhile, the Radiant Courier just got sniped. We'll check on that in a second. But the wards get plopped down mid, and they begin the siege on the Tier 1 tower. The blasts come through. They glyph to try and hold, but... Really Realistically, even if the back goes in, you're going into a lot. The blasts of the ward finally cleaned up, but still the tower, well, too low to defend. And now they want more. They're going to chase on the ice, ice, ice. Can't quite get a rage for this one, but the back comes back might go. Nope. And let's see, that Radiant Courier ended up, it was carrying boots. I think he could died over here in the jungle. Maybe it's the Prophet who picked it off. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Ohio TP'd in and, and managed to snipe that, and he's going to have a Maelstrom as a result of that. And that's Burning's Boots, which is yeah. the one here that you don't want to be ganked. <laughs> if anyone, if anyone's to die, it shouldn't be Burning if you're DK. And it's not just about the gank, it's also about the farming efficiency. All that's of his true. illusions move slower. It's going to take him those few extra seconds to farm the camp. And when you're looking at a game where it's all about time, those seconds could be crucial. Speaking, Speaking of that, that not a oh, burning. Burning's He dead. had no mana anyway. It really wouldn't have mattered, but... It's just another death, and again, Sin, the one hero that can't die on this team if they're going to mount a comeback. It, it just seems too easy for Titan. It's, he just walks into their waiting arms, and everything's going the way right now. What He's an unfortunate start. And Titan. Oh, they have it on Razor now. You have Titan. to love the way that Titan drafted this game. Didn't try to hedge their bets, just said, you know what? Oh, you want to be greedy? Next. We're going all in on this push strat. Pugna was the perfect last game for the scenario so far. He's been working out wonderfully for Titan. They're now teaching the first tier 2 of the match. We'll see if DK can do anything about it. They still don't have Ravage. They haven't skilled Poison Nova, actually. Isis Isis maxing wards and the, the Sting, which I think might be the right choice, actually, since committing into the fight is pretty much impossible for him at this point. His pull is also but really taxed right now. Do we see high ground? Like, I mean, as long as... Why not? You have mech. Yeah, you You've have got mech, double point booster on... Wards. The Ancient Apparition's gonna- oh, there's gonna be an Ancient Apparition ult that flies, will it find anyone? Towards the found it goes, land up just out of range of that, and, and will barely survive. Meanwhile, MMY also running for dear life. I think this is where we, Vici might have gone to high ground. That's the one difference. Vici is not afraid of going high ground in like 12 minute games, but at the same time, Titan, they could get a Roshan first, secure them that themselves that, and go in, and there's that, no that extra one and a half minute they could commit to that probably won't matter. Lanham is half a level away from six, he won't make that on time. Naga, they know the relic is not for burning yet, so the radiance will not be one of a, like a 12 or 13 minute one. So this is a free Roche. A little surprised to see them commit the mass open wars to that. I think they could have maybe just taken a little bit longer to take the Roche and then gone pushing the base immediately with the wards. Well, it looks like Mudike will finally try to find their first gank of the game with the Bat Rider. He hasn't had many openings yet, keeps on life training these illusions to clean them up. And although Mushi wants to go in, there's an Ags on Yamate. That is not a kill they're gonna find. They'll back off now, but mi not so lucky mid lane. Lanham caught out, still not level six, and dealt with by Titan. Eight to one. They're just running them over. There's it's about a no thousand resistance. gold per minute already. A thousand gold in a 12 minute game? These are the kind of games where teams come back in like 5% maybe of the cases. If that. DK is definitely the. They have the lineup that can do it and they have the heroes, but. I'm just. I'm worried for them if they lose the last tier twos within the next few minutes. They they can't really get out on the map. And if Naga Siren doesn't have the radiance by that point, they're going to be struggling to push out the lanes. And Titan can just farm the entire map, and until they they feel confident with going high ground, then they they do it when they want to. And I gotta say, Sin, the support tide has been a total non-factor this game so far. Can't stop the push because if he walks in, he just gets disintegrated. And standing back and waiting, doesn't have Ravage yet. Hasn't really done anything in these fights. And already they've lost four towers. They're going to lose five soon. And if he's going to be an impact hero, it won't be until they breach high ground. Generally not how you want to support to come online, but we'll see. Titan still waiting. They've got wards and 10. They'll throw an HF for Schultz on the side, and they find Mushi here. They knew he was up to some cheeky shenanigans, and they'll bring him down again. Titan, they know Mushi too well. He 
years of experience playing with the Gaia and taking advantage of it here. A win here would improve their record Radiant's to a point where they actually fallen. have the inside track over Titan. The Relic has been picked up by Burning, and boy, it's sorely needed. But nonetheless, are we going to see a Courier Snipe? It's going to walk right over right over a, a Radiant Ward, so no Dire Ward spotting this one out. And he will get his Relic safely, well, in a second. And like you said, going into the series, is of Any course, there's a little now. bit of a grudge between Yamate and, and Mushi, so... This is probably the game where Yamate will be focused at his 100% focus. He wants to play the perfect game, wants to really, wants to prove himself. And the stat that we saw in the beginning of the game was over the course of this year, DK are 8 and 1 against Titan. I am not sure when they got their, uh, when Titan got their victory. I would imagine it would actually have been early in the year. So I think DK is on a, a really, really big winning streak against Titan. But when you see this game, you would have thought it would be the other way around. Like Titan are. Absolutely crushing DK at this point, and dare I say that DK's weakest point in this tournament so far has been their drafting. It's it seems like in many games they just get out strategized, and this one is like the two games we've seen today so far have been the perfect examples. And DK have to stall. At the very least, they have mechanics to do it now. But this fight coming up right now is going to be game deciding. Actually. They're very they close to, to the radiance. If if Titan loses a fight here, suddenly Bernie will have radiance and probably 500 to 800 gold on his way to the treads, which he normally goes for, or if he wants to go Boots of Travel, that's an option as well, but as good as it looks for Titan right now, if they make a mistake with this push, they're gonna give the Naga her opening, and then the Batrider may start to find some space for pickoff, so Titan in great position, this is where you want to be ideally with this kind of draft, but they don't want to get cocky, just a slow and steady siege. If they even want to wait for the wards to cool down, I think that wouldn't be a bad thing. Then play. the Radiance is up. That's the, that's the choice they have to make here. Or unless, if they manage to make the snipe... Oh, Lasso! It's on the net. Oh, he's he's going caught out in a bad spot, and now they want to bring down the Shadow Shaman, picked off and dealt with. There was a Radiant Observer Ward here on the hill, which set it up. Every kill for DK right now is just so important. It's it's the best way of stalling is Batrider right now. Together with, of course, the Venno Wards, but... And even with radiant. a couple of He's going to have Radiance up. for the next push, almost yeah. certainly. This is one of the... I have seen games turned around like this, but... Having seen Titan playing in this tournament so far, and, and DK playing this far from behind, it hasn't really been... there. I, I have a hard time believing in this comeback, but it is definitely possible just from the draft. And the big player, Mushi, cannot make mistakes now. It's pretty much, he has to play the flawless game from now on, he needs to get the right pickoffs, he needs to find the openings, they need to constantly have Ven awards up, and then maybe, just maybe, can they buy enough time for burning. The Radiance will be coming up now, he needs one last hit for that, so that's the good news for DK. Will accelerate his farm by a lot, of course, and... You know, the other thing... Oh, better oh, man's the guy oh. picked off and oh, nearly brought down by Yamate. Can give him the life drain here, go for it again. A long range drain, nearly picking him off. Ohio secures the kill. He will get Geld and, and then Poison Nova as well. Can't TP out, but summons the Trance and will retreat. And that means no Poison Nova for high ground defense. And although the Radiance comes, I feel they need more. Do Titan have a pipe? They do not, but they all have huge HP pulls. There's three point boosters on this team. Triple Ogre Club to boot, and an Aghanim Scepter on top of that for Yamate. We're looking at a lineup that has an average of over a thousand HP, especially with your Razor Sin on 1600. So maybe actually, if they go back for a pipe now, they're going to be almost invulnerable to DK's magic damage. I'm a little surprised seeing this lineup that they didn't go for a pipe on the Pugna. I think it would have allowed them to go high ground right now, but they're they're prioritizing BKB on uh, Yamate's Pugna, and the other heroes are getting Axe Scepters. AA, 500 gold off. Razor, 500 gold off. Shadow Shaman, 2700 gold off. And finally, Prophet is going for an Orchid. I guess just to shut down the tide. Just Orchid him, hit the other heroes, not be afraid of the Ravage. Or the Naga as well, prevent her from slowing. Or the Naga, If she's yeah. still pushing. That, that's the other thing, is let's say they don't break high ground. Can this Naga actually get out on the map? Maybe the Illusions can farm, but the hero itself, I don't find it... I don't think it's going to be safe and... Oh, oh, ice, 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 he's going to get backstabbed here. That's a dead Venno. Nowhere to Say go. Say bye to the banana. Net's going to pull him in and... Well, now they'll clean up the Ancients as well. And this is the thing is, if Titan are playing from ahead, I think they can deal with Naga Illusions as well. They have an Ancient Apparition Ice Blast, which will soon be an Ags upgrade. The Shadow Shaman's working towards his own Ags. Razor's not too far off of his. In fact, maybe coming on the Courier right now. Indeed it is. So... This whole lineup gets eggs, I think, and they get the Mjolnir and the Prophet. I think they can kill the Illusion straight up. Can deal with them for a while, but not not when it's a six slot Naga. But for the next yeah. 15, 20 minutes, time isn't ticking that much yet for for Titan. It's they're going to be looking fine for the next 10 minutes, pretty much no matter what happens. But 
again, it's the mind game. The men, when does it start kicking in? When do they feel like, okay, guys, we actually have to make this play now? Is it going to affect them so that they make a wrong call or a bad decision? Or are they just keeping it cool and, and keep taking actives? They, they are finding the pickoffs as well. Apart from that one kill Mushi got, I don't think I don't think DK has got a kill in the last like 10 minutes. If you actually try to bring up the gold graph, that's kind of hilarious when you look at it. There are two green spots on this. Those are the two only kills that DK got. They haven't claimed a single tower, no objectives at all, no Roshan. In a 20 minute game, they found two kills and nothing else. There's that's a nice flash flying control. top, and it's about to spot out DK. They were already spotted by a lane ward, but now they're gonna sound the retreat. Mushi got clipped by it. MMY will TP out and land him. He will too. Is there gonna be a stun to cancel the TP? Nothing for the Pugna. They'll try to go for a life drain, but it is a bit too late. Well, they escaped, but I gotta say, this Wardson is doing a lot of work. It's this a really a, cool ward, too. It's, it really looks like it shouldn't be possible. It's yeah. like off the map, basically, but uh, so it is. I don't think you can do that at Dota 1. Now, there's um, the cliff. The cliff wards here in Dota 2 I don't think were, were possible. You can, I think you can do them pretty much all the way around the map, but there are just some spots that are way better than others. This ward actually isn't even that good. It's great against Batrider if he tries to flank you up here, but if you see how much is covering the lane, it's like not even half that you can see, so wow, I'm really good at drawing. So if they if they like run in the right half of it, they, they could actually get caught out by surprise. It's it's not the best ward, but it's one you know won't get dewarded at least, right? <laughs> Unless Batrider gets a gem. Yeah, which, well, Mushi needs his 4 step first. He's not there yet. But the Radiance has come online, and all of a sudden there's Boots of Travel out for a burning, and his net worth nearly equal to that of the Prophet, and we have seen those games, Sin, where Anaga outcarries four equally farmed heroes. So, as much as Titan had a great start, they can't be resting easy. I don't think they have the late game solutions for Anaga. There's no Ember Spirit here. There's no other Mass Cleave artist. There's no Faceless Void to burst her inside of a Chrono. To me, if it does go late, I actually still favor DK. They also have the Bat, for and sure. that hero wins late game. Just flat out, so... Yeah, Titan, you know that next push is coming soon. They can't be waiting for too much more. BKB about to arrive on the Pugna. The Orca coming out for the Prophet. I don't think they'll wait for Nets eggs. It's not really that close, and... Beyond just that, gotta get the next Roche and then probably try to. They should go for it. To go high ground. Now, the thing that usually happens when Naga picks up a Radiance is that the gold graphs start going and will start going in that team's favor, but it's not. It's plateaued though. It's only yeah, it's pretty Dyer's much plateaued. It's dipping by a very little bit, so pretty attack. much negligible. But just the farm coming in for DK. Naga is getting a lot of farm, but the other heroes are getting starved. And until we see a big tank item coming out for burning, we're going to see an ult, uh, actually a Yasha now. So still very fragile illusions. He's just doing, he's investing everything into farming pace, which makes a lot of sense here. He he has to do it. But I'm imagining Heart is next, and that's the time Titan wants to strike before the Heart comes up. Especially if they could do it right now when he doesn't buy back. Yeah. If they see the Yasha, maybe they actually try to go for the siege. The one other thing that's really smart from Titan is they've been blocking camp. There's a Sentry Ward in this camp, a Sentry in this one as well, and a Sentry here last. Now, a lot of Nagas build gem, which means the illusions get true sight and you can deward those, but they are slowing down the Naga. Burning, he responded correctly though, he just starts farming the enemy jungle. Mushi. <laughs> like, you usually, when you see someone positioning himself like Mushi does right now, They've it's got because backup coming. that's some sort of backup. He's basically just hanging out in the right hand side of the map. Just. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what the goal is here because his team is so far away. Maybe he's waiting for like a push that's going to come in like 30 seconds to a minute, but. He's pretty much stranded out here. I think that gets a question mark. Maybe he can backstab a creep point. But at the same time, where else would he be, right? He can't He can't really farm because they have to give all the farm to the Naga. If he's in the enemy jungle, he probably gets caught out. And by the way, speaking of enemy jungle, I love the play from Burning on focusing more in the dire jungle than the radiant one. Yeah, because he, he knows, knows his, his jungle is at all. So really it's way better right. to go for the other one. So smart. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. There goes Roche. Who's going to get the Aegis? Hmm, I think you give it to KYXY here, I want to say. I just know BKB as of yet, and they will. And he, he can lead the siege with, of course, with the Eye of the Storm, and... The only other thing I could see them waiting for is his BKB, but beyond that, I think they're just playing too scared. I think waiting longer for more items means every time you get an item, Naga gets one and a half. Yeah. Even though, like you said, the gold is, the gold is plateauing, but... Naga getting one and a half items. Plutoid is good for DK. That means, about they, one. That means not really. they're not losing anymore. It's just that they're down already. But yeah. the, the, the advantage of Titan has not increased in some time, actually. It's a pretty big mountain to climb, but it is doable. And I think for Titan, it's actually a mistake to go mid. I think that's the hardest lane to push for them. Uh, the bottom lane would be easier to spread out in and get the right positioning, I would feel. 
especially now when they run into a wall of six wards. What they actually should be doing is, oh wait a second, they're actually going to drop the wards for this. Oh, they're not going to fight into like seven seven by KYX. Oh, another ward gets stolen. That's actually a huge pickup here. And he drops it already. Why? KYX fight with Eye of the Storm and wards backing him up is in the front lines. Remember, he has the Aegis. He already popped mech earlier. If he dies though, he's not going to have Eye of the Storm for round two. They're gonna get the tower. I don't think they get Rex in this push. Oh, now the song. They look to turn. They've got a ravage. There's only the solitary BKB. So this is gonna hit, and this is gonna hurt. No, no he gets attacked. He gets attacked and then ignored. He can't ravage yet. And now he wants to back. Meanwhile, on the backside of playing net, we'll deal with burning. They lost the Naga. They get nothing in return. What a great hex. Too fast. That was really well played because they didn't try to focus the tide, they just hex him and ignore him and deal with the Mago. It Sim. looked like DK weren't sure they were gonna go for that, because usually you can set up the Ravage, right? But he was actually he started walking around a little bit like he didn't want to use the Ravage because he was expecting the BKB from Pugna to be used and felt like the other heroes were in a good enough position, so yeah, they pretty much they got the tier three for for an Aegis, they got a kill on the Naga, and Song was used, so they have a, a window of opportunity of about a minute now to go to their next lane. Now, as I was saying, the one thing that surprised me about Titan's play was that they go to the mid lane where... You think the you side have lanes a bit, are a bit you, safer. You have, it, it depends, right? Because you have, you have more space to move and spread out, in a way, in mid. But when you want to siege the tower, the way you reinforce and go in is actually a really good setup for Naga and Tide. You could say that about the other lanes, and to be honest, maybe maybe it doesn't really matter where they go. The one difference about pushing mid is that the defensive team can come from many different angles. Yeah, and especially if you push a side lane, they can come from like one angle, right in the bottom lane. You know where Bat is going to jump from because he doesn't have any choices. He can come from like here or here, right, just from above. In the mid lane, there's way more ways of of playing around with it and a bigger area. And what they actually should be doing, I think, Titan, is push two lanes at once. Yeah. So that wherever there's a lot of Plague Wards, you just go to the other lane. And then Ice 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 isn't set up. This time they fought into seven Plague Wards, and they still won the fight. It kind of shows that they're far ahead, but if, if this was slightly more even, I think Titan could have made a really big mistake there. I believe there was a gem just picked up by, by DK as well. thought I saw one. Let's see. Yeah, there's a gem on the courier by MMY, and this means the warding of camps won't be effective anymore. Naga can safely send her illusions to D-Ward, and they do get the true sight, so... Well, that's if it goes longer. Titan say we want to end now. We've taken one lane of Rex, or not one lane of Rex, one tier three, and now we go for our first lane of Rex. Onto the high ground, so they will appear. Here come the Triants, they blink in, they get the wards off right away. Very important from that, and now, the base in jeopardy. There's no glyph available, Titan are gonna have to fight, here we go. Oh, this is a perfect setup for Ravage. They could get a five-man one right now. Will Adam for it? No, he gets orchided. Oh, they can't get it off. He's hexed up, but now he lets it go on to three. But Yamate stands strong, and he life drains one. Now he can look for more. Will anyone stand against this Pugna? No chance. Now they last. Okay, Y X Y. His BKB just delivered. Can they finish the job? They can't. Yamate sucks him down. And he will fall, no Ravage, no Song, and now it's round two for Titan. They just lost the Aegis as well, but Sin, there's nothing to defend here, only Naga illusions. They might be enough to be up. The heroes of, of Titan are dropping fairly low here, KYXY standing very far ahead. He's gonna die to pretty much anything at this point. Ohio just bought back, is he gonna get out of there? Yes, he will actually TP they out. can't go on Yamate, Wait, okay. no, no, Burn is too powerful! Burn oh. stops! He barely makes it out. He's a siege engine. They walk in. They just get drained, but now he's out of mana. And this is their opening. With that last life drain ending, Yamate will fall. And they retreat. DK holds their racks after it all is said and done. Oh, it looks so good for Titan. But they couldn't finish the job. And the only buyback there, I think, was actually from Titan. It was the profit. DK didn't spend any extra resources. Burning, I believe, didn't even die. So he got 1,400 gold, has the manta. And Ohio bought back. Yeah, it's... You know, it's still a 20,000 gold lead, but... Again, it's about the mental game. Are Titan gonna get nervous? Do they feel like, wow, we actually have a big advantage, we failed that push. The moment they hesitate, they're gonna be in a lot of trouble. I think they should try to go again right away, but... You know, it's one minute cooldown on Ravage. If they were pushing mid right now, and Pugna TP'd in, they could actually reach the base, drop the Master Serpent Wars, and probably take the Melon Rats at least, but... And it looks like it is what they will do. They're porting into mid, they know the cooldowns are still up for DK. Let's see, Song of the Siren will now be available. Poison Nova will also be available. They also have 40 level, seconds on Ravage. Level 11 on HF Persian, so his ult gets a lot stronger. They've got double BKB now. Only had the, the single BKB at the start yeah, of that Yeah, KYXY had to lose it, use it when he had like 50 health to not die to Firefly, so...
I That's think they true. can just pop their BKBs. Actually, Glyph is about to cool down. And there are some buybacks Five available here. The Naga is the key one. It could be really bad for Titan if they get over aggressive. A slow and steady siege is what they want. Net's about to blink in. We'll yeah, drop the, the ward. And the Pug is just removing these Naga illusions, though. It's the same as you said about the Lion. Life Train works the same way. Wow. He channels it for a very short duration, and he just takes one illusion down after the other. Here comes the song, though. They have Ravage in one. They're ready. Will it be enough? Land him off to the sides. He doesn't want to get silenced. He just gushes. He hasn't engaged yet, and Yamate is standing strong through it. Now Kwax are on to land him. If they lose him, they don't have the Ravage for this fight, and there is no buyback. Land him hesitates, and it's the Disaster that results. Well, they do hold high ground for now. Yeah. Wards are out of range of the rats. They were not placed in the correct location. They don't want to go for the song into Ravage combo because what oh, they no, those are do is those are stolen wards. Those are stolen wards. Oh yeah. Okay. But they. Uh, so why are they not hitting the Rex? They want to bait the the BKBs from Titan. It's yeah. the only way they defend the base. So they song. They pretend that Titan will Ravage. Titan used two BKBs immediately, and uh, yes, they had to sacrifice Landon for it. But again, the Rex didn't fall. Titan used both their BKBs on the first play, then they don't dare pushing in because they know t up in 5 seconds and he didn't use the Ravage, so actually Lanham dying like that would have been better than if he had used the Ravage, hitting 3 heroes and 2 BKBs, I think they would have lost the Rax right there, so actually a really good play <laughs> to not go for the combo, as, as it, unbelievable as that might sound. If Titan can't win this game, Naga is getting banned against DK in future matches, because the only thing they could have done differently is tried to force the issue sooner, but... Or go to another lane. Yes, but that being said, I mean, you're 20k gold up. It shouldn't be this hard, and so it is. Yeah, Prophet's gonna get a BKB now as well. I and mean, the farm on Burning is unbelievable. Through this all, he's he's not stopped farming soon. He hasn't just been sitting in base. He's got a Manta online, and he's sitting on 3,500 gold. So he's completed the Yasha into Manta progression, and still... He's got that next item. If they win one more fight, he probably has the gold for a butterfly or a heart. Imagine it will be a heart against all the magic damage. And, well, they needed to pick off here. They'll find Lanham, and there's a BKB on Ohio, but can he actually kill off Lanham in time? The chase is on, the trance gets summoned, and they will lose Lanham, though. At this point, <laughs> I think he's more a distraction than anything else. Yeah, this this pickoff cost him a BKB charge. I'm not... I'm not even sure it's worth it for Ohio, unless they can push high ground right now. Actually, Tide has no buyback. So there's a 30 second opening now. Ohio will have used his BKB, but it doesn't really matter. He didn't need it in the previous fight. They have Glyph though. DK they didn't lose use Glyph, Glyph in the last and fight. Song. The Plague Wards are once again in position. And I'm not sure why Titan aren't trying to pressure two lanes at once. They have a profit. They're being so adamant on going for this mid lane, but the split push might actually be the right solution right now. Naga is still not so strong that Ohio can't just kill the illusions by attacking them a couple of times with the Maelstrom and start pushing two lanes. Pugna can very quickly rotate between them and use Nether Blast. And suddenly, when you spread out, Venomancer becomes so much weaker, but with these one lane sieges, it's like the best defensive hero in the game. Yeah, you can still commit to mid. You just push into the other lane first, and then maybe the Prophet goes over there, or stays there, if he sees that you're investing too much in the mid fight, but they're not doing it. This is like one of the games where Alliance would just send Bulldog in the other lane. And like, maybe even the Shadow Shaman goes there, just yeah. dump the wards in drop another the lane. Drop the wards, yeah. Because they have so many ways of pressuring the lanes that they don't have to go on the same lane. There's, they have been very many possible rotations. Prophet can always go in the lane. Uh, like you said, Shadow Shaman can drop the wards. Nether Blast is a... It's pretty much... No risk, as long as they see the Batrider. There's no one else who's going to pick up Yamate. What are they going to do, sing and then he just BKBs? And if they commit a song to killing one hero, they might lose Rax in another lane, right? So the split push from uh, from Titan is what I think they should realize right now that they could be going for. But as it is, DK are just buying time and they're playing it perfectly. Like DK are, are not giving them any sort of openings, to be honest. It's getting to that point where I feel one or two more bad fights for DK or for Titan could actually just give DK the win flat out. They just the other thing is they've been investing a lot in blocking off this radiant jungle, but then Burning's just farming their own. Yeah. So it may actually be hurting them to do this because that means they they don't really get either jungle to farm at that point. So, well, the gold graph has plateaued for a long time, and if t DK start winning fights, then there's six towers and potentially a Roche to be claimed, especially the towers. At some point, they're going to fall if Naga gets out on the map, and that's where what looks like an amazing lead and an overwhelming one quickly becomes a manageable 10k lead. So they got to be careful. Oh boy, now the heart. That's big. Bloodstone. Huh. Now for the pot.
Yamate is extremely farmed on this Pugna. Like, but he's a Pugna. Yeah. And is this going to be the item that turns the game? It's still a surprisingly strong hero with farm, actually. It's got great sustained damage throughout the fights. When BKBs aren't... There's no BKBs on DK's lineup, right? So Life Drain is an amazing ability. And the one thing to remember, actually, about the Naga, it doesn't matter how strong the illusions get as long as Yamate is not controlled. He just kills them one after the other. Zero second cooldown Life Drain. He just casts it on one after the other. As long as he has the mana pool, which it does with the Bloodstone, it's actually a really smart itemization here from uh, from Yamate. That's true in the fights, but yep. the, the illusions are not always in the fight. They're often backstabbing towers. And Actually, speaking of which, that's going to be the first tower of the game for DK. Slowly but steadily, they're getting a little bit of a grip on the map. It's still looking grim for them, but... Fun time, you've got to say, and these... <laughs> I feel like Ice 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 is playing tower defense. He's playing another game. <laughs> It's not he's, been, he's been practicing Warcraft 3 recently. Perfect placement. Goes for the good block so that the creeps have to run around like this. It's a to solid Maximize his damage. You want them to get caught in the choke points, you know, so you get off a few extra volleys. But, well, Titan will right click their way through these wards and then they'll wait for round two. The wards will come back. They actually dropped the nether ward. That's going to be sniped. And, well, on that note, I think they're going to have a tougher time without this nether ward in the fight. And already, you see an illusions making a run for it. Yeah. Draw the creep wave back. Head for the hills. Ohio will TP it and gank it. And That's where the it and gank the pug needs to be with the creep wave, so Naga can't do that. Just keep it life draining. He, he needs to escort it. It's yeah. now an escort mission. It's no longer thrown. But again, where's the pipe? Anyone. Where it? It's the pipe for Titan. They could get it on Razor in a moment, actually, if they want. I think that's the one item that they're missing in this game to just breach high ground. Pipe would be amazing again. If you look at DK's heroes, it's like an they obvious keep on choice. Getting through. All right, that one will dispel, but three more are coming from another angle. Burning is just making Titan miserable. He'll probably drop one into the lane. He may let this one wave through, but that's going to be it. He's going to cut the second wave, and then they'll look to hold the line here. And the mechanism being used here by KYXY, so... I don't... I... I, not this is in. not good enough. They need more than one. Now he's backstabbing tier one towers. He's gonna rip tight the wave, and Titan have been completely shut down. This time, Sin, they didn't even hit a building. Full HP on the melee, and the range has not dropped any further. And again, the mental game will start kicking in now. In a few minutes, Titan will be like, "Okay, guys, th just go for it. Just we're far ahead. All in. Let's go." And if they lose that fight. The game suddenly looks really bad for them because they they have to be getting frustrated at this that point. The frustration will mount. Frustration. Don't never ever underestimate. Like when you're watching this game, these guys are professional. They're really good at the game, but they're human beings, and the the emotions that everyone else has, these players have them too. If you imagine yourself <laughs> playing this game and how you would feel, they probably feel the same way. <laughs> They will let a single wave through, and this is coming with a full wave of Treants. I Dyer's think they're just going to have to say, you know what, we have to go, and Sin, you wanted a split push, you're finally getting they a split push. finally go for another lane. Well, is it too oh, late though? There's the been a lasso, it pulls in Yamate, can he get on BKB? They ravage as well, he doesn't have Aegis, they've lost their Pugna, he has Bloodstone, but he's dead for a while. Now they look to turn, they'll bring down the Rubik, and the song comes through. Will there be any follow-up for this one? Burning? No, he'll back off. So just a stalling song. And now, Ohio, actually overextended, trapped in the base. Mushi's gonna corral him, they lose the Aegis. Do they lose another life? They've lost three, they've gotten nothing, Sin. Absolutely nothing. Still base standing strong. Actually, Ohio will die again, even after the Aegis gets netted up, brought down a second time, at DK don't even lose a single hit point on the range. The tier three top stands as well. And it's starting to feel like Titan are losing their grip on this game. And do you remember the one thing I said Titan needed to... Just, just one thing that needed to not happen when they were split pushing? They needed to see the Batrider. The one way they can lose these fights is if Yamate is the one getting caught out by the lasso and he gets burst down. Because he is the number one hero that they cannot afford to lose in the beginning of the fight. He has the best tower damage out of all of them with Nether Blast. He I has have to Nether question Lord. why he doesn't have the illusions. Yeah, I don't know why they give the Aegis to Prophet instead of the... Pugna here, he could just sold a TP scroll and had it. He's a way more valuable hero, and if, if Prophet dies, he can buy back and TP back in. Like, a Pugna with an Aegis is so much more, more valuable right now. And did they use the cheese? No. At least that's one thing they've got going for them. They've got the cheese on KYX, right? But the problem is, they don't get to use it. Whoever whoever DK go on with the lasso, they have the means of bursting them down. And they're just really... <laughs> it's pretty amazing to watch how DK are playing this defensively, but it also leaves you feeling like... Titan could have really done more so far. I think they're, considering how amazing their early game was, I feel like they're choking a little bit, honestly. They are. There's no question about it. They had a 20k gold lead, and they never even cracked a range racks with a Pugna. They have a Pugna and a Shadow Shaman. 
and DK have yet to lose a single lane of Rax after two Roshans as well. Yeah. There's a lot of decisions you can point to, but at this point, I honestly say Titan are one fight away from being purely on the defense of this game. As it is, I'd say it's it's a 20, uh, 15 to 20k gold lead that looks virtually dead even. You, how often do you say that about a game? That's... Almost never. But it really and is. I think 75% of the times you say it is with a Naga in the game. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> or maybe Tinker 80. is maybe the other yeah, one. Yeah, Tinker. But Naga especially, I feel. But yeah, y Yamate cannot die. It's it's absolutely mandatory for Titan to not lose the Pugna. If, if someone else gets lassoed, I think it's fine. They can actually just... They could lose the AA and he doesn't get a spell off. And I still think they siege and get the Rex. But... Pugna cannot be caught out at this point, and the way DK are playing the game, they're just playing it super safe. Look, I mean, this smoke gang is not going to work because there's five DK heroes in their base. The only things moving outside of the base are Burning's Illusions. He's almost got 500 CS in a 40 minute game, which is, what's that, 13 CS per minute? Or, or 12? It's over about 10 12. Cents. Yeah, it's 12 to 13. 12 and it's well over 10. 12 and a bit. And his gold per minute is sitting at 630. Very low for burning. There's a lot of powers left to get. Yeah, his average was 758, right? It's, it's a really on, bad burning. performance Step it up. by burning this game, Sin. Like, Absolutely say. underwhelming Naga play. What a burning. terrible player. Report Naga, please, team. <laughs> Doesn't have 800 GPM in a massive losing game. <laughs> but the sad part is there's there's five towers to be claimed and they've yet to crack a Roche. If they do that, if they breach high ground, this GPM is going to shoot the hell up. But for now, you just see it time and again. Illusions okay. in the enemy woods. Okay, Titan. Now it's go time. You've got Refresher on Razor. What you are they waiting for? They, they, you know they want to go. At this point, they're like, it's 40 minutes in. This game was supposed to be over at 25. One HP tower mid. Got it. That's got to suck for burning. He worked so hard for that. Got it down to one health. Dude, that's an objective. One more tower. Yeah. Every tower that falls is an objective on the path to the throne for burning right now. Like the and he doesn't need the gold. Let's be honest. He's already getting close <laughs> to six slotted. It really doesn't matter at this point for him. It's... Well, why am I talking about 6-slotted? 8-slotted is, yes, is the new 6-slotted Definitely. Naga. Naga Siren doesn't stop at 6. She goes for a Necro Book and a Refresher on the Courier as well. And Well... We're getting there, Sins. When is Roshan up? So, we will know in 30... Uh, 45 seconds, we will see when the respawn timer is. Maybe Titan are waiting for that. They'll have two cheeses. I mean, at the end of the day, the thing is, it's only burning farming, right? It would be more worrying for Titan if someone else was getting you farmed. You say too. that, but there's, the item progression isn't terrible here. There's a pipe on the tide, and eggs and a mech on the Venno. It's not great. It's a 40-minute game. Yes. And those, it's a core precision Venno with a net worth of 10,000. It's it definitely is to be not expected. Great. That's a 250 GPM. But it is a, a very strong item, nonetheless. We're looking at a level 2 of Poison Nova, and they have no pipe. There's still no pipe on Titan. They have three BKBs, but they're getting a bit low. 8 second BKB on the Razor, that's fairly healthy. I guess they're all fairly healthy, but one or two more failed pushes, 7 on the Pugna, they'll be down to that 5-6 second range. Well, Titan, what's it gonna be? It's a medium respawn time for Osh. Actually, no, it's pretty... Yeah, it's about medium. And this is a big one. Average. They get the BKB. That's a big pickup. On that's the a bat. great item against Titan. The one concern for Batrider, though, is if he commits in, and there's two Razor Ultimates running. He's actually going to die before he gets the target out, almost. Even he has with, nine armor. That's even not with enough. a four staff, that shreds him really, really quickly. Well, I think the answer is don't jump the Razor. Try and pick off somebody a little bit low-hanging fruit. Yeah, or Razor's definitely not your target. It's it's Pugna. It will have to be Pugna. They're scouting Roche. I think the... the all for Titan right now is, okay, guys, we messed up on the last Aegis. This one we give to Pugna. And then we go and push two lanes at once, and we do it right this time around. I still, you know, if it wasn't for the fact that Titan are probably shaking a little bit after how they should feel like they should have won the game for 15 minutes, like, let's imagine we have a 30-minute pause. The players go out, they get a drink, they come back, they reset their minds and look constructively at the game. Easily advantage Titan. But the way the game is developing now, they're getting... You, you can just see how they've been pushing over the last 10 minutes. They're, they're exponentially more nervous than they were 20 minutes ago. And that means even with the right items and with the right... Like with two cheeses and an Aegis, they could choke and make wrong calls and wrong plays. And if that happens twice, DK are winning this game. They cannot fail. If they fail one push, I still think Titan can make it. Two times, they're out. Well, Burning is going to have his next item, by the way. He's got 5,000 gold. He'll be six slotted in a moment. He'll sell the ring of tequila and get uh, probably a butterfly, which costs 6,000. So we're looking at two or three minutes on that if he wants to have buyback with it. And now DK. They're not going to sit at base forever. They've done it for 30 minutes. 
And they make a move, and they find someone mid, and it's Yamate, the one they really want. They get him as well. Down he goes. And Rubik's still Nether Blast. That's he has five back. Big. He does have five back here, but being forced to use it and dying again could have cost them heavily. A DK actually want to force it. Up. All of a sudden, they're streaming out from their base. There's illusions into the pit, Dyer's and TK are getting aggressive. They're looking for the tier to mid. Birdie's beaten on it, and it's no creep wave here, so it's a bit premature. Even with the stolen blast, Profital will clean up the illusions. And I think I think DK should be careful with this. I think they're going to get out. Mushi disengages. He ported back. They wanted the, the right call. Buy back there, but they're not going to get it. It's the right call from DK. They cannot go for this. Oh, Hayo almost. Oh, never mind. He doesn't have a hit. So he's now that's burning. actually. He's going for right click here, Ohio, picking up the Chrysalis and... They're, s they're actually killing these illusions pretty quickly, all things considered, right? It's, these are illusions with 3,000 health, and they just disappeared over like one or one and a half seconds, so... Titan are still looking good, it's still... It, they have it, illusion Pugna. clear, that's for sure. The Pugna alone can clear all the illusions. Yes. It's just, does he get to see an illusion? Because Bernie's just sending them snaking all over the map, backstabbing, and that's before he gets... Before he's on offense, where it's he's actually, spawning in their base and killing the other lanes. It's the number one priority for Titan, is Pugna does not get caught, and he should prioritize life training illusions over everything else. If he can kill like three or four of the illus, I think they're going to win the fight. That's the one counter you have to Naga in the late game, is that she is so heavily illusion based that the main hero is actually not that scary. As long as you take down a lot of the illusions, either by having massive AE damage or just hexes, drains, stuff that removes them, like that. And they're, they're gonna give the Pugna the Aegis. Now. I think this is a really good smart call, adventure. Titan. Yeah. That's the right decision. Where does the Aegis go? They now have an Aegis, or sorry, a Cheese on the Prophet, a Cheese cheese. on the Razor. Everyone has buyback, I think. Yeah, yes. Well, that's 10 heroes with buyback. This is gonna be bloody. This could be <laughs> quite a few deaths. We're looking at the potential for 20 deaths plus an Aegis and double Cheese. So make it 23 lives oh between boy. both teams as we come into this fight. Dead Ladies and gentlemen, Ohio. hang on to your hats. This is gonna be bumpy. We're coming in for a rough D set. Titan moving forward. This time they're committed. It's all fine. They're not split pushing. They are gonna go in Ohio straight onto the high ground. It's nice, nice, nice they won. They get him fast with the wards here as well. They will commit. But the song comes out now, and Rubik has stolen an Ether Shock. He wanted the wards. He doesn't find them. Bernie marches in, but now the Razor drives him back with a double ultimate. They actually can't fight they him. Got the they got Rex! Finally, 46 minutes in. Titan strike, and now they look to run. Nice ah, indeed. And they'll make they their fought retreat. so hard for that, and they get a lane. You know, the thing about that zero buybacks except for the Veto. The thing about <laughs> that fight was, first of all, Titan go in, they commit. Prophet goes in with a blink dagger and gets a sprout and just start hitting someone. And Mushi did not want to go for the lasso because the Aegis is on the Pugna. This time they couldn't go for the counterplay. And I think we're gonna see uh, we're gonna see Titan just go for the next lane. The moment the refresher is available for the Razor, which is in a uh, hundred seconds, maybe they wait for it, maybe they don't. They forced a buyback on Venom, so that's that's at least pretty good. <laughs> Burning's now at six hundred CS. Wow. Well, butterfly. I, I and think buyback. if you're DK, you look at that fight and say, we can't let them get to our base like that again. Yeah, that they, was. Exp they, have, they actually have to catch them out now. I think DK will realize now that they they might have felt safe because of the amount of farm they've been getting on the Naga, but at the end of the day, the farm on Titan is just it's still scary even with a six slot of Naga. With their hero composition, they, they still deal with the illusions fairly quickly. One thing we haven't talked about is how good Mass Serpent Wards actually are against the Illos too. Now at least he has the Butterfly now, so they have evasion, but the amount of damage sources Titan have to deal with the Illos are... You know, we said early on that DK were just flat out going to win late game. I'm not I'm not sure, uh, even even if they weren't down this much. The, the only oh, thing that wins smoke. now is map control. Here we go. It's everything. Yamate into the front, and they're going top. So they find a pick off here. Burning is actually in the front lines. He's going to spam some illusions and now sends them in. It will reveal Yamate, who quickly deals with them. Suck, suck, suck. Down they go. But do they fight? Do they turn? They BKB. They go in with the last one. They're going to pull Net into the fight. They want the Shadow Jump and Dead to start it off. Burning, trying to cover the retreat, but everybody's got BKB and their mothers too. And they just stand through the song what? and keep on fighting. They break <laughs> down the Venomancer. There's no trade here yet. Yeah, I love the choice from Shadow Shaman from that to get the BKB instead of the eggs. He realized it's a bigger... How does he live for It's a better choice. He BKB before he got lasso. That's unbelievable. The, the physical damage from DK is not there. Well, not unless the Nogalutions are hitting him, but yeah. they were not. And they weren't. This now there's no Benno. That's the dieback. Probably the second lane here. Illus are just going to get removed by Yamata here. 
Now he knows that's the real Naga because that didn't just disappear. KYX will have two ultimates in 20 seconds. Will DK get the opening? Song of the Siren is on 20 seconds cooldown as well. Ravage is available. Okay, Yamate's out of mana. This is where Titan has to be careful. He does have Aegis. He has the Aegis. He has Aegis. But no mana. This is the one way they can deal with them. And now they go. They last off KYX fight. Then they ravage to secure the kill. They've lost their Razor. They've suddenly lost another. But there are buybacks. And there is Aegis. Yamate can life drain these illusions and deal with them. He's trying to run. And they're doing a lot of damage to him, actually. There's more backup. He'll start turning. But he gets just destroyed. He tries now for a life drain. Oh, and now he's got backup. Net comes in. Jams it in. They get the kill. And Mushi's driven back. They've done it. They've brought down the Naga. She has buyback. She's got to do it. They're all buying back now. The Rubik, the Bat, the Naga. It's round two. Let's go. Buybacks not very plentiful. Zero on the Radiant. Only KYX three on the Dire. They're doing so much damage with the double ultimate, but he's taking a lot as well. Half BKB ready now. Electrical though. Storm. It's going to wear off soon, but burning. No more illusions for now. He tries to stand. Oh, the cheese. cheese! The cheese! It's going to save him. Dives him back. That's a dieback for burning. MMY will fall as well. And land him next. It's a full wipe again. It's a double wipe for Titan. And G, G, they do it. They stand strong. They were there were some slips along the way, but in the end, they take down DK. Oh, they must have. They're, I can just, I can almost from across, from across the buildings, I can feel the sigh of relief right now <laughs> from Titan. It, it, that must it, have been really like that game stressful. was slipping away. That you gotta admire their so composure stressful. after how that went. And DK, oh boy. secret weapon Naga, apparently not strong enough. If you don't lose all your six towers at 15 minutes, and, yes. you, and you are actually the ones with map control,